news tonight, government announces national vaccine lottery. Six month old, youngest COVID victim. An FNU vice chancellor resigns. From the studios of FBC Suva, Atera Lendua. Good evening, Fiji. The government has announced a national vaccine lottery that enters fully vaccinated Fijians into a regular draw to win cash prizes. Prime Minister Moregi Manimarama believes every Fiji Fijian who has taken the time to follow the science by registering, showing up and getting both jabs deserve a shot of a reward. Koretandulala reports. The Prime Minister says the first draw will be for $8,000 on the 7th of next month to coincide with the 8th anniversary of our constitution and it is for fully vaccinated Fijians. To apply, everyone needs to provide their birth registration number or citizenship number, their first and last name, their date of birth, the tax identification number and the date and site of your second vaccination, which you can find on your vaccine card. Bani Marama says the second draw will be on Fiji Day with $51,000 in prize money in recognition of Fiji's 51st anniversary of independence. As I've said before, the ultimate prize in this vaccine lottery isn't cash. It is the lives that we'll save and the sense of normalcy that can be restored for all of us. The Prime Minister also says that Fiji is on pace to fully vaccinate over 95% of eligible adults. The application window for the first draw opens from 5 p.m. today until 5 a.m. on Tuesday and eligible Fijians can dial star 166 hash to enter the win together sweepstakes. Korei Tandulala, FBC News. A six-month-old baby has become Fiji's youngest COVID victim. And the health ministry is sounding new alarm that due to the widespread community transmission of the Delta variant, more children will continue to be infected. The baby and an 11-year-old girl from Namotini village in Navua were the two children among 11 deaths reported yesterday. Apinisa Mangarandova reports the ministry stresses this unfortunate rare event is possible given Fiji's widespread infections. The infant was taken to the Bukuya Health Centre in respiratory distress. He was retrieved by a Nandi hospital medical team who took him to the Lotoko Divisional Hospital. Sadly, he died 20 days after admission at the Lotoko Hospital. A total of five children have now succumbed to COVID-19 since the pandemic hit Fiji in April. As we continue to see the virus spread in our community, we will see children being infected and some tragically dying from COVID-19. So once again, we are set with the same example. A rare event is rare, but if there's too much of that event happening around the place, then those rare events will become commonly seen. Dr. Fong adds an internal audit of deaths indicate many people did not want to seek medical help because of misinformation. It is even more unfortunate that people from the medical community have promoted this deadly misinformation doing so in utter violation of the duty of care that we owe to the people of Fiji. The PS adds many individuals who died had a real chance of being saved if only the health teams were able to see them earlier. Apinison Gardovo, FBC News. The Ministry of Health is keeping a close watch on the 3,545 positive patients in home isolation in the Western Division. Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Chemesa Tundravu says the follow-up exercise is being done through the care flow pathway that was established as part of the mitigation phase. Through the pathway, the patient is directed to a care plan at home and followed up through telehealth. Ritika Kumar reports. The ministry considers different attributes to follow up with the patients and categorizes them. Attributes such as uh, age and the presence of comorbidities and they're placed into uh, categories of high, moderate or low risk and the follow-up uh, actions for these patients are tailored to the patient's level of uh, risks. Dr. Tundravu has reiterated the health facilities in the central and western divisions remain operational. The Lotoka Hospital as the main COVID hospital in the west while in the central division it's CWM Hospital and the FEMAT 
a field hospital providing this role. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says they are trying to mitigate the effects of the widespread transmission in the West. Unfortunately, the situation in the Western Division is getting worse as we are seeing an intensifying outbreak. The ministry has recorded a total of 45,300 infections to date. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Ministry of Health is trying to verify the final number of contacts for three positive cases in the Maratiri area in Lambasa. Sixty contacts have been established so far. They have been swabbed and have returned negative results. Eleanor Turangivu has more. The Ministry of Health is conducting further tracing and testing as the outlook for the new COVID-19 cases indicate a persistent risk of a community outbreak. Screening teams are sweeping the containment uh, zone today, and they, which is outside the Namaratiri area, they have collected another 84 total swabs, and they'll continue to swab and screen at vaccination sites in all the other health stations in Lambasa area. This has prompted the ministry to strengthen its network of screening clinics in the north, and anyone who has COVID-19 symptoms is encouraged to visit one immediately. We request if people have these people who have these symptoms. Do not go to their normal health center, for, as this puts other individuals in those health center at risk. Dr. James Fong says it is absolutely necessary that strict containment measures be put in place, as it will allow health teams to identify and isolate those who have been infected. In the north, this will also buy us precious time to allow our vaccination team to reach all eligible adults for vaccination, in particular those who are at risk of severe disease. There are now five active cases of COVID-19 in the north after an individual repatriated from Suva tested positive to the virus. The individual is undergoing 14 days quarantine at the Mala quarantine facility. The positive case from Nambowalu is now in a stable condition and all primary contacts continue to return negative test results. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. The Vice Chancellor of the Fiji National University, Professor Toby Wilkinson, has resigned. FNU Council Chair Tessa Price says Wilkinson has decided to relocate to the United Kingdom due to family reasons. Price has agreed to Professor Wilkinson's request to stand down from the role at the end of the year. She says the university has made great strides under Professor Wilkinson's leadership. We've adopted an ambitious new five-year strategic plan. We're going to enhance its governance and the leadership arrangements. We've signed agreements with important national and international partners. The Council has appointed Dr. William May, currently Dean of the College of Medicine, Nursing and Health Sciences, as Deputy Vice-Chancellor. And to our latest COVID-19 update for today, Fiji recorded 205 new COVID-19 infections for the period ending at 8 a.m. yesterday. 95 cases are from the west, 80 from the central, 29 from the east, and one case is from the northern division. The health ministry also recorded 11 COVID-19 deaths between 18th to the 26th of August. Eight are from the western division and three from the central. Fiji has recorded 45,303 cases since April this year. There are now 19,280 active cases with 25,289 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll now stands at 479. The vaccination campaign also continues around the country. In the latest update, 558,135 or 95.1% of the target population have received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 262,758 or 44.8% have received their second dose. The five most vaccinated areas include Ba Rewa, Nandronga and Naitasiri, which are 100% first jabbed and then Nandi. So Sheila Devi from Nanduru Road, no sorry, is fully vaccinated. Have you received your jab yet?
Up ahead, quarantine operations beefed up. And lay preacher assists fellow villagers. Welcome back. The Ministry of Health has beefed up its operations as any lapse in quarantine protocols present a high risk during this pandemic. The Border Health Protection Facility has been established in the Civil Aviation Authority of Fiji compound in Namakanandi, which will coordinate and oversee the quarantine operations. Kutika Kumar reports a container laboratory has also been set up in Namaka, which can process around 500 tests per day. The Ministry of Health will be enforcing additional measures to strengthen the quarantine operations to ensure there is no breach. We are establishing a slot management system with Fiji Airways so we can put a cap on the quarantine capacity to be always within manageable levels. We are going to restrict uh, international traveler entry to only fully vaccinated individuals. The Ministry intends to create a no-blame environment where the quarantine teams feel safe from discrimination for reporting any breaches or if feeling unwell. Dr. Fong says they have increased CCTV support and oversight within the quarantine facility. We will be having the requirement that all quarantine personnel engaged in quarantine operations must be fully vaccinated. Nandi International Airport staff are working closely with the ministry to ensure safety measures are adhered to. So we are working closely with the Ministry of Defense, with the Ministry of Health for that matter, to ensure that when our borders open, that we will heighten our uh, measures on uh, protection. The scale-up required by the crisis has been vital, and Ministry will continue to adapt and learn as they respond. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The government has identified that over 57,000 people who are vaccinated did not have their records synced online. Minister for Economy Ayaz Said Kayoub says these people had applied for the unemployment benefit. Apinisa Wangarandovo reports around 200 civil servants, majority of whom are teachers, are trying to fix this anomaly as the government continues to make payouts for them. The Minister for Economy says they are making progress in syncing the information of these people so they can receive the government assistance. Uh, we had 57,913 people uh, in that category and uh, 48,000 of those, 40, 46,800 of those have already been paid. The others, the verification process is take, still taking place. Sayed Kim says most of these applicants are from the Western Division. A lot of the people, the information was actually put on the tablets but the staff or the nurses did not sync it in with the digital records. Head of Vaccination Task Force, Dr. Rachel Davis, says they will look into improving these for future reference. This will definitely help us clean up our data, and especially when it comes to um, uh, not just now in terms of the first and second, but in the near future. Um, if science directs us for booster doses, and we've been thinking about it from the very beginning of, um, of the importance of registration and recall systems. The government is expected to continue with the payouts despite the deadline ending yesterday. Some of these recipients are people who have applied during the application window but have not received their first dose. If they manage to receive their first dose by yesterday, they are eligible for the assistance. Apinisong Grandovo, FBC News. The National Fire Authority is concerned over the recent increase in bush, grass, rubbish and sugarcane fires. Chief Executive Paul Masawane is sounding the alarm to those who are carelessly lighting fires that pose a threat to properties. This month, to date, 243 such incidents have been recorded by the NFA, of which 179 were from the Western Division, 44 in the North and 20 in the Central and Eastern Divisions. While these bushfires pose a threat to farms, properties, people's lives, and especially those with health issues and animals, they also impose considerable pressure on the resources of the NFA. The NFA has incurred a cost of over $95,000 just in a month while attending to these incidents. Under the Environment Management Regulations 2007, a penalty of up to $10,000 applies to anyone who intentionally burns household garbage without a permit. 
A lay preacher from Namata in Bautai Lebu is practicing his biblical teaching of helping thy neighbor during this COVID-19 pandemic. Isikeli Sobolebu is going out of his way to assist the villagers of Savu Wungale by selling their produce at the Nosori market. Koritando Lala reports. <laughs> An emotional Isikeli Sovalevu says the sound of his people's plea has moved him to lend a helping hand. These are not easy times. My thoughts are with my people back in the village, and I can only imagine the difficulty they face as they cannot come and sell their produce. Sovalevu, who serves three churches in his division, says Fijians need to work together in order to overcome this ordeal brought by the pandemic. It hurts me to know how much our people are struggling because of COVID-19, but this is the help me and my wife are doing to help them. We advise them to bring their produce down to the Longani border, we pick it from there and we sell it for them here at the Nosori market and then we send their money back. We need to work hard and place our faith in the good Lord that this situation will come to an end soon. Until then, the onus is on us to do our part and help each other. At the end of each day, Sovalevu travels back to the border to pass on the earnings to the families they are assisting. Korei Tandulala, FBC News. Ahead at sports, Olympic gold medalist off to take up contract. And Ronaldo sees red again. There's some more coming up. Welcome back. Olympian Chuta Wendigolo today left the country for France. 22-year-old Wendigolo, together with his wife Fiona, departed early this morning by Sydney. Wendigolo will be joining top 14 club Toulon after signing a three-year deal. The seventh star says this is a new chapter for him and his wife. Wendigolo thanked everyone who supported him in his rugby career. The Oceania Squash Tournament, scheduled for November, is now cancelled. The tournament was postponed last year, and our organizers have decided to call it off as COVID continues to ravage Fiji. Thalei Materukula reports. Organizers have given some reassurance that Fiji may still host the next tournament whenever it's held. It's basically cancelled by Oceania Squash, but in retrospect to that, they have said that uh, come 2023, they are uh, adamant to sort of give Fiji the first round of refusal to host the, the championships in 2023. The cancellation is a blessing in disguise for squash Fiji. The Nandi Sports Club had earlier put out a, an expression of interest for the construction of two new courts to complement the two that are already existing, which will bring the total to four courts. Eh? Hopefully by the time we host the championships in 2023, that would be in place, which would then also allow us to explore other opportunities. That would be a very good thing for Scotch players in Fiji to participate in this tournament and for the development of the sport. At the moment, the Federation is getting members vaccinated, hoping for the safe return of sports towards the end of the year. Bali Materkula, FBC Sports. The football world woke up this morning to news that football star Cristiano Ronaldo will return to Manchester United. As Aquila Dama reports, United, United's announcement came following a dramatic 24 hours after neighbours Manchester City had looked to be one of the favourites to land the forward. The Kaiviti Siltails players and management who are away in Australia for more than five months have reunited with their families. It was a beautiful moment straight out of quarantine for the Leve Leve family when dad, Penaya Leve Leve, got to meet his son for the first time. Just like they did in Sydney, the Siltails sang a hymn after completing their 14-day quarantine in Nadi. The Kaiviti Siltails are expected to return to Australia in November for the 2022 Ron Massey Cup pre-season training in Sydney. 
NRL star Latrell Mitchell season could be over as the Rebettors fullback was placed on report for an incident that left former teammate Joey Manu with a suspected fractured cheekbone. Mitchell scored two tries as South Sydney thrash Roosters 54-12 to last night. In another game last night, the Warriors threw away a 16-0 lead against Amber Raiders. The Raiders staged a great fight back to win 28 to 16. England's push for victory in the third cricket test was met with stubborn resistance from India on day three at Headingley. There were some dramas in the opening day of the Paralympic Games track and field competitions in Tokyo, Japan. It started in the men's 5,000 meters T11 classification for athletes with visual impairment, where athletes were accompanied by guide runners. Mostly fine conditions prevailed over the group today. Looking at the west, beautiful with a blend of sun and clouds. Eastwards from Pacific Harbor to Suva, breezy this morning, mostly cloudy with a passing shower. Up north, nice with sun and areas of low clouds. At sea, expect strong southeasterly winds over eastern Vunolevu, Yasawa, Kandavu, Lao, and the Lomavipi groups and Rakiraki with average speeds of 37 kilometers per hour to 45 kilometers per hour easy to 27 kilometers per hour to 37 kilometers per hour later tomorrow. Rough seas becoming moderate to rough later tomorrow. Turning to the tides, the next high tide is at 11 tonight with low tide at 521 tomorrow morning. Sun rises at 616. For tomorrow, cloudy periods with some showers over the main islands. And outlook for Monday, fine conditions, nights to remain cool. Recapping our main stories, government announces national vaccine lottery, six-month-old youngest COVID victim, and FNU vice chancellor resigns. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we're asking, are you confident that Fiji will meet its October vaccination deadline? Visit our website to take part. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos via email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts. And you can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest news, sports, and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news for tonight. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.